I've missed you the last couple of days. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of October 27th. Now, if you watch my show, you already know what I do. I share my due diligence with you. I'm a day trader, and I primarily trade penny stocks. And while I'm out there, I am searching all the markets for any stock under five bucks that have the potential to make us money. And when I find those sort of stocks, I share them with you. However, I go searching for hot penny stocks a little differently than most people. I depend on the technicals. That is to say, I'm looking for heat in the charts rather than heat in the news. I look for a chart that has heat. I'm looking for a breakout setup or volume coming in. When I find a chart like that, then I'll match that up to a catalyst. I'll go through the filings and the press releases looking for one. When I find a catalyst and a hot chart, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you every day. And I got a few to share with you right now. Got our first stock all set up and ready to go. This is ZOM, ticker Z-O-M, Zometica Corporation. Now, by all rights, I was supposed to look at this on Thursday during our live streaming event. At least that's what I promised Dino Bykick. He asked me to look at it. I said I would. I did the research. I put it in the queue. It was ready. It was there. I just overlooked it. I apologize, Dino. I don't know how that happened, but I'm making good on my promise now. So Zom's chart is an atypical breakout chart, though she's not perfectly set up right now. However, she's had a lot of big news here recently. She's made some acquisitions and her revenues are growing strong. So I think Zom is a good consideration. Zom finished the day on Friday at about 15 and a half cents and she fell almost 4%. She's on the major exchange, the New York Stock Exchange. So you're going to be able to trade this for free. There are no transaction fees trading major exchange stocks and you get the benefit of trading at pre-market, after-market as well. You can't do that with OTC stocks, and there's a lot of gains to be taken there. So what is ZOM all about? Well, Zometica is a veterinary health company, creating products for dogs and cats, and now horses as well, focusing on the unmet needs of clinical veterinarians. Zometica's product portfolio will include innovative diagnostic and medical devices that emphasize patient health and practice health. It is Zometica's mission to provide veterinarians the opportunity to increase productivity and grow revenue while better serving the animals in their care. Now, taking a look at some of their products on their website. So this is Zometica.com, and I brought you over here to share some of these devices with you. Not going to go into it too deep, but I want to cover them briefly so you at least have an idea of what this company is doing. So one of their products is True Forma. This is basically a blood test machine that checks the plasma for diseases in your animals. You take a sample of the blood, you put it into the cartridge they supply, plug it into the machine, and in less than 20 minutes, you have your test results. It's a real small machine, about the size of a shoebox, weighs seven pounds, and the company is very impressed with it. As you're gonna see by the most recent news, they just acquired the company that makes this. Another one of their products is Pulse Vet. This uses ultrasound. What you do is you send ultrasound through the soft tissue to the joint and it vibrates the liquid around the cartilage in the joint, warming it up, soothing that pain, and after a while, totally eliminating the pain. In the process, you don't feel anything while they're doing it. I know, I had this done to my shoulder. No, not by the veterinarian, by my doctor. Another product they have is TrueView. TrueView is basically a microscope. You got your plasma test. You put them on slides, slide them into this machine, and you get big, clear pictures that you can see real easy. Another product they have is Vet Guardian. This is a monitoring device, not just video. It monitors the health of your animal. You put it up against the cage like this when they've had surgery or you got to leave your animal when you're traveling, and it has a video so you can watch the animal and using Doppler without any wires, nothing attached to your animal, you are monitoring its temperature, pulse, and respiration. They like this product so much that they also acquired this company. And two other products I liked was a Sissy Loop. I'm not quite sure how this works, but again, it helps soothe the pain of your animal. And then they have Calmer Canine, which keeps your animal calm. 
And again, they're doing this with frequencies and electricity, not drugs. And I'm not quite sure how this one works either. But now you've got an idea of what they're doing. Let's go take a look at some information on this company now. We're going to get the rest of this information over here at the otcmarkets.com website. Taking a look at the relative volume, she dropped a little bit today. Over the last 30 days, she's been doing roughly 2.8 million shares. Today, she dropped about 345,000 shares down to 2.5 million. Share structure for the company. It's pretty big, and that doesn't look right. Our outstanding share count here, it's roughly a billion shares, 980 million. And they tell us that the insiders, the management, own about 16 million of those shares. Well, if you subtract that from the outstanding share count, that should leave us about 964 million shares, not 547. So I don't know what's right and what's wrong here, but I'm willing to bet we've got an awfully high float with this stock. Financials for Zom. Well, 2021 is when they first started making revenues. Jumped into the game, getting $4.1 million that year and keeping about $3 million in profit. Over the next year, she increased her revenues by over 400%, jumping to almost $19 million, keeping $13.6 million in profit. Looking at her quarterly, she's doing good. She's been increasing, going from $4.2 up to $6 million over the last year and lots of profit coming in. Now, if we look at the last four quarters, which would be a year, we have $22 million over the last 12 months. Well, the 12 months for 2022, we did just under $19 million. So right now we are $3.1 million up over last year's revenues. So revenues are increasing. Balance sheet for the company. Well, they got lots of money in the bank, about 28 million. Lots of money in short-term investments, about 102 million. Add all their assets together, they've got over a quarter billion, 274 million. And liabilities is really small. We're down there at 15.2 million. Now, if you subtract the liabilities from the assets, you're down there at 250 million, which is what we should see here down at shareholder equity. But there is more to consider. We have to subtract that negative number right there and add that positive number right there and you end up with positive 147 million shareholder equity. Not bad. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company. All right, we've got a few 8Ks here. One of these correlates to news, which we're gonna look at. Another one is a notice from the New York Stock Exchange. The company's been told that they are under a dollar. They are not meeting the minimum bid price requirement of the New York Stock Exchange. If major exchange stocks go under a dollar for too long, they can be thrown off the major exchange down to the OTC. First, they get a warning. That's all they get. Second time, they get a deadline. They get six months to get it up over a dollar for 10 days straight. They got to close over a dollar for 10 days and then they're out of hot water. But if they don't get that done, they will end up down on the OTC. Now, she has not been given a deadline, no six months. She's just been told, you better take care of this. So that's where we're at right now. At 15 cents, we need to get this up over a buck. Let's take a look at that news now. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind, when the New York Stock Exchange reaches out to the company and tells them they have to resolve this minimum bid price requirement deficiency, what is it that they expect them to do? It's not like the company can actually force the price up, not without doing a reverse stock split. That seems to be the only option on the table for them. So if we, the investors, do not push that price up close to a dollar here soon, chances are, most likely, we are going to have a reverse stock split. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So let's take a look at the news now. I'm going back here to August 10th when the company announces record second quarter 2023 financial results. Revenues were up 43% to $6 million. Strong 67% gross margin on profits and $142.4 million in liquidity. As I said, the company is strong financially. Then we've got about four pieces of news here about them going to conferences. I love this about the company. They're talking to veterinarians. They're talking to investors. They're stirring up business. That is great. 
Then here at the beginning of September, the company closes the acquisition of Structured Monitoring Products, SMP, adding revolutionary VetGuardian, the touchless vital signs monitor to their products portfolio. Then it was halfway through September, they received that notice from the New York Stock Exchange that they're not meeting the minimum bid price requirement. Then it was here halfway through September that they added horses to their true form of diagnostic platform so that you can now check for Cushing's disease in your horses. Then at the beginning of October, Zomedia announces acquisition of True Forma's platform developer or Quova Biotech, accelerating the timeline to gain control of manufacturing and research development. That sounds like some more research needs to be done. So the company's made some acquisitions. They've got strong financials. The only problem here is, is that the stock price is too low. It needs to get up. If we can break out on this chart, maybe we have a chance. As I said, the company hasn't been given any deadlines yet, so all is still safe and good. Let's go take a look at this chart. Now we get to have some fun. I love charting. It's the best part of doing due diligence as far as I'm concerned. So we're going to chart these stocks on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. I got this free when I signed up with TD Ameritrade, and that didn't cost me anything either. So we are looking at a one-day, one-year chart for ZOM, ticker Z-O-M, Zometica Corporation. Our 52-week low hit at the end of December of 15 cents. Two weeks later in July, we had a high of 33.5 cents. More than 100% run there, but it was short-lived. She came down, bounced on the 200 a couple times, and then just started to fall away. And now she is just hovering over that 52-week low. Looking at our six-month, four-hour view. Our high on our six-month chart is just over 28 cents when she was over the 200. Came under the 200, and right about here, she's starting to go level. You see our 200 getting flat. And when did she break out? Right there when she got flat. Now, I went to look for catalysts. There are no news presses. There are no filings. She broke out because the 200 finally leveled out. She ran here from 20 cents to 27 cents. It was about a 30% run. And it too was short-lived, came back down, landed on the 200 many, many times for a couple weeks here, and then just fell away. Even though the 200 is pushing up, she fell away and brought that 200 into a downtrend again. Now, she looks like she wants to jump and climb again. The reason I say that is right here. She was underneath every single SMA, had one big green bar, break through the 50 with a long wick, got real close to the 200, and came back down. And it has adjusted the entire price from underneath all the SMAs to on top of the 50. Now that she's on top of the 50, she's gunning for the 200. Here we've got a breakout. She fell back, bounced on the 50, broke out higher, fell back, bounced off the 50, and we get our directional intentional spike. She jumps and gets a long spike way up over and then comes back down underneath the 200, which I'm fully expecting, but I don't want it to go any lower than where it started. And this one came down higher, back on the 50. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's my token sign. She is going to break out first chance she gets. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to be in a day or two. It could be, but now's the time to watch it. Though it looks bad, doesn't it? She has fallen away from that directional intentional spike down to this low, hovering over that 52-week low. And she's just going sideways right now, and nothing else looks all that great. All of these SMAs are pushing down. Volume, nothing special to talk about. It's the same as it's been. And our oscillators, well, our PPO, Percentage price oscillator, you read it the same as the MACD. You want that blue line on top of the pink and you want it pushing up. Well, this one's under the pink and it's pushing down. MACD, surprisingly enough, does have an uptrend right now. She has crossed over, but she doesn't have a lot of strength. And her RSI is clear down here at 40. I don't like to see it any less than 55. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she was under the 200 here falling, had that jump, real tall spike, put her on top of the 200. And she's just working it up there, boing, 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 hit a high here, and then we had this 
fall away for reasons I don't know. And she has bounced off of that low bubble, hitting the 50 day and struggling with it. She has fallen back down and she looks weak right now. All of the oscillators are going the wrong direction. Our RSI is at 44 and every single SMA is pushing down right now. Honestly, I'm thinking she's going to fall and hit this low bubble. And when she hits that low bubble, that'll probably be when she launches. Five day, five minute. Oh boy, she was in a very strong downtrend here. We're at 16.8 cents, hit this low bubble, hit the 200, jumped up onto the 200. Now this block right here seems pretty important to me. She is level right here, folks. These to me look like pillars. What I mean by that, that directional intentional spike that goes way up, I think that's telling me that she wants to climb. These here look like supports. It's coming down through the 200, but there's nothing down here to touch. It's just stabbing into the ground like a bridge, pillars, and it's going to hold it up. So I normally expect to climb after I see a bunch of these go through the 200. Well, I'm not quite sure what happened here, but we had another abrupt fall right here. When everything started looking beautiful and good, she fell again. Maybe shorters. I don't know. She came down here to, well, 15 and a half cents, and now she's working back up to that 200 struggling. But all the pressure is pushing down still. Coming down, all of our oscillators are pushing down. My best guess. She is going to come down to this low bubble of 15 and she's probably maybe going to go just a smidge under it to scare you and then she's going to start to climb and bounce and climb and bounce and climb. That's the way I see her. But you do your own charting. You do your own due diligence. I think she looks good. Z-O-M. Put it on your watch list. You know it can't hurt. Our next penny stock is without a doubt a hot penny stock. This is Blue Fire Equipment, ticker BLFR. Now, I first became acquainted with this company because one of my friends on Twitter, Thebes1, made a tweet that he had just entered into this company. I looked it over. It looked good. I grabbed that ball and I ran with it. I shared it on my live streaming event on Thursday, and now I'm sharing it with you. Blue Fire Equipment upgraded from Pink Limited to Pink Current October 12th. And when she did that, she started growing first slow and then faster and faster. And she has not stopped growing this entire time. She's been floating on her nine day SMA. And every time she got just a little bit too high, she came back and touched it and took off again. Friday, we had our first red bar on the four hour chart above the nine day SMA. I think it's going to tap and bounce most likely because the company has had some good news here recently. They've made some deals. But they also made some deals last year. Are you aware of those? I'm going to share all of that with you right now. Ticker BLFR finished today at 34.5 cents with about 1.5% gains. She is on the bottom tier of the OTC, the pinks, but she is current. She's got validated information. Pinks don't come with validated information. That's why they're on the bottom tier. But these green ticks are exactly that. Transfer agent, verified verified profile. There's lots of information here that's real important being verified by the OTC markets, a third party, unbiased third party. So when you're trading a pink folks, make sure to see these green ticks over here. Now, if you're investing, it's vital to see them there. If you're day trading, it's reassuring, but you can get in and out probably without any problems, as long as you don't get caught holding a bag. So what is blue fire equipment all about? Well, this description is updated. This is where they are at right now. BLFR, after its first acquisitions in the oil and gas industry, acquiring Screaming Eagle Partners, which is operating in the state of Texas, has rapidly gained traction and momentum, which has propelled its growth and focus on the increasing acquisitions within the energy sector. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Yeah, about average, <laughs> a little less, dropping from 257,000 shares down to 232,000 shares. Share structure for the company. It's actually looking pretty good. Outstanding share count is only about 34 million. The insiders are holding more than half of those, almost 19 million, leaving us with a nice round number of 15 million for the float. 
Not a bad float. What's concerning here is their authorized share count. They got 2 billion shares authorized. They could put all those shares on the market if they wanted to make some money, but they can also use those shares as currency to make deals with other companies. Currently right now, their market cap is at $11.7 million. Financials for the company. Well, at the end of 2022, they did $22,000, not $22. <laughs> Remember those three zeros up here. We have to add to any numbers. Looking at the quarterly for the company, well, that's kind of strange. She's only making money every other quarter and about the same, $22,000, $21,000. Having a clue what that's about. Looking at her balance sheet. Oh my, what's going on here? All right, we got no money in the bank. We have no short-term assets, no long-term assets. And all we've got is $28,000 in liabilities. Definitely a startup company. Taking a look at those disclosures, we don't have anything here whatsoever. So let's just jump onto that news because there is a lot of news. So we are looking at news going all the way back to August here, August 11th. Now, this is very interesting, so follow me as I take you on this journey. I'm going to cover half this news by headlining it, and then I'm going to jump into a financial and show you what's really going on here. Blue Fire Equipment reports that it is now debt-free and current with the OTC markets after its restructure for its pending merger and new direction. Also September of last year, the company acquires Miracle Life Farm, a six-year family-owned farm in Homestead, Florida with approximately $3.4 million in assets and revenue as of June 30th, 2022. This is an exotic fruit farm. They sell all sorts of exotic fruit to super chain stores like Winn-Dixie and such. Another piece of news that came out in September, the company commences company name and ticker change process for its new direction in the $12.5 billion agricultural market. Then they cease being a shell company after acquiring Miracle Life because now they've got revenues. Then in April, of 2023, Blue Fire Corps acquires Sun Industrial Group. And then we get a CEO letter. Now let's back up, jumping into a financial, see what's going on here, because it's not all as it seems. On August 27, 2022, the company completed the acquisition of Miracle Life Farm, a Florida limited liability company specializing in growing and delivering healthy food to consumers, exotic fruit. But on April 4th, 2023, the company entered into an unwinding agreement with Miracle Life Farms to terminate and unwind the acquisition. Then on April 4th, the company entered into a business combination agreement with Sun Industrial Group Holdings. Now, this is not an agricultural company. This is industrial construction. They were doing all of this. They tell us here on June 22nd, the company entered into an unwinding agreement with Sun Industrial Group to terminate and unwind the acquisition. So they started off in agriculture, new merger, new direction, going to change their name and everything. Hit the brakes. No, we're not going to do that. They got out of that April 4th and got into this company. Same day, April 4th. And then a couple months later, stop. We don't want to do that either. Let's get out of the industrial construction. So now what are they doing? Picking up on that news where we left off, it was October 12th that the CEO brought out that shareholders letter, which is the same day that they moved from Pink Limited to Pink Current and the stock started to climb. Now there's two other pieces of news here, deals that they made. I want to jump into all three of these real briefly. October 12th. The CEO tells us that just the day before the company had uploaded onto the OTC markets their late quarterly reports, and that was going to get them all caught up. They had also filed the change of controls event and merger transition. They said that once current, the company was planning on announcing their new merger and direction for a positive cash flow merger. And that was this one that came out October 19th. Blue Fire Equipment acquires Screaming Eagle Partners, a cash flow positive family owned oil and gas company in Texas. 
The company announces the 90% acquisition of Screaming Eagle Partners, a cash flow positive family owned oil and gas company in the state of Texas. Screaming Eagle holds 90% ownership interest in the joint venture formed in 2022 along with Buffalo 22, which holds the other 10%. The joint venture owns existing wells purchased from prior operators in the Fort Trinidad field. And currently they are producing roughly 6,000 barrels of oil a month and almost 18,000 metric cubic feet of natural gas a month. They tell us here that during the year ended December 31st, 2022, Screaming Eagle had generated revenues of almost $4 million, and that will become the company's. The other piece of news was a deal they just did uh, Friday. Yes, Blue Fire Equipment Corporation enters into a binding letter of agreement with Resource Rock Exploration to increase oil production. The company enters into a binding letter agreement with Resource Rock Exploration to increase oil production as part of a six-month plan, which was mentioned during the third week of October 2023. Resource Rock will hold 12.5% interest of the Badias Creek and Gin Creek South assets, leaving Screaming Eagle Partners with 77.5%. Screaming Eagle received roughly a half a million dollars cash for that 12.5% that Resource Rock got. And Resource Rock is going to give them an additional $1 million commitment to fund the workovers and recompletions, as well as an additional $1.6 million if they need it. Furthermore, Screaming Eagle and Resource shall negotiate a joint operating agreement for the operation of assets on or before November 3rd, 2023. So we've got ourselves a window of opportunity there. So those deals they made last year, none of them count for anything. So don't even consider them. Looks like <laughs> for the time being, they are focusing in on oil now, not commercial construction, not agriculture, oil. And this is going to be big business as soon as it comes back to life. We know a lot of oil companies right now on the OTC that are way down. And I do expect them to start climbing once the AI bubble, which is building right now, pops. During bubbles, energy goes down. When the bubbles pop, energy comes back up. And that may be the case here. Who knows? But she's got a lot of catalysts. And oh my God, she's got a hot chart. You haven't seen it yet? Come on, come on, I'll share it with you. Taking a look at Blue Fire Equipment, ticker BLFR. We've got a one day, one year chart up on the board. Our 52 week low is triple zero one, that hit in May. October 24th, we had a 52 week high of 42 cents. Now the truth of the matter is, this is a 10 year high. <laughs> During our live streaming event, uh, Taylor, my charter, she went back to see when the last time was we hit 42 cents and it was 10 years ago. So this is a big deal right now, folks. And did you know, between that low bubble in May and that high bubble in October, it took 420,000% gains. To put that in another way for you, for every $100 you invested down here, you would have made $420,000 on that C note up here. Now the chances of you getting in at triple zero one are slim to nil, but triple zero two, that's pretty easy to do. And if you'd have gotten in at triple zero two for every $100 you would have invested, you would have been paid here $210,000. Amazing, isn't it? Let's come on down to that six month, four hour view. Looks a lot like the last chart, doesn't it? This is when our run started. Huge amount of volume came in October 12th, and that is when she started a run on the nine day SMA, just floating every day. You can see the bottom corners of these big bars were just touching the nine day SMA. Then it started to pull away and we see gap underneath the price between the nine. You can't get that price too far away from the nine. If it does, it could come down and crash through it and fall. So it looks to me like she's readjusting. She's coming down to tap it. Right now we're at 34 and a half cents. The SMA is at about 28 cents. It's gonna move, it's gonna come up as this is coming down. I think it's gonna tap and bounce. 
No guarantees, no promises. Nobody knows anything for sure. Volume was real strong at the beginning of this run. It is still strong compared to the volume we had before, but it is tapering off. Our SMAs are perfect. Every single one has just crossed our brand new 200-day SMA and nice and evenly spaced climbing. Our oscillators are looking pretty good. All of them show a lot of strength. We've had a little bit of pullback on our PPO, the percentage price oscillator, but it's still way up there. Our MACD, it's climbing hard, but we can see there's a little bit of depression there. She's coming down just a little. And oh my God, our RSI is at 93. That is a rare occasion. Unbelievable. Coming down to that 20-day, one-hour view. So this is all run. We are here at double zero four. And she is running on the nine-day SMA on the hourly chart. She is coming underneath it now, pushing down towards her 20. And now she's starting to settle on her 20. Still, all of her SMAs are looking good. Volume is the least it has been over these last 20 days. The oscillators, all of them are pushing down right now. All of them. Doesn't look nice, but our RSI is even keel, going straight across the board right now. And our five-day, five-minute view. <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? Low bubble in this corner of about 6.7 cents. She's growing fast. We just had a low of a double zero four. Now we're at 6.7 cents. Pushed up to 42 cents in two days. In two days, that is six times six, 36. That's like 650% gains right there, folks. In two days. She has been floating over her new 200-day SMA, working her way towards it reluctantly. I bet she touches it and bounces off of it. Volume is nothing to talk about right now. Oscillators, looks like our PPO is going to do a crossover on the pink. It's going to go over top, get some strength. Our PPO is pushing up. My ADX is pushing down. I got a spread. This ADX is my trend continuation. As long as the line is straight, whatever the trend is doing, it will continue doing. As soon as the line changes direction, the trend changes direction. Well, whenever you see the red line coming towards the blue and the blue line coming towards the red like that, your price is falling. When they start separating and going apart, your price is rising. Guaranteed, 100%. That's why I like these two oscillators. Our MACD, we got a crossover on that as well is going on top of the line and pushing towards the signal line. And our RSI, again, is just going sideways, but it's moved up now. It's at 50. I don't want to see it any less than 55. So things are looking good here. We've got catalysts. We've got multiple deals they just made. They don't have a lot of debt, but they don't have any assets either. And we really don't see any revenues. So it is a wild card play. Energy is down, and they've been running. I like BLFR, but I'm not quite sure what she's going to do. Right now, she is on an uptrend. Watch her closely, folks. Now, here's a stock you're probably quite familiar with. I know I've covered it a couple times. This is TOI, ticker T-O-I, the Oncology Institute. Now, her chart is hot but it is by no means any kind of breakout chart. <laughs> no, she broke out months ago. Back in June, she hit a 52-week low of 33 cents, bounced off of that, got on top of the 200, and she's been climbing ever since then. They are bounces, but she's climbing. Now, she was in hot water. This is a major exchange stock on the NASDAQ. They cannot be under a dollar too long, or they'll get thrown off down to the OTC markets. Well, Toy got a warning. Well, she has been climbing ever since that low bubble, and she did it. She got over a dollar for 10 consecutive days, and she is not in hot water anymore. Now, she hasn't got any news, catalyst-wise. What they've got are financials, November 8th, and their financials have been growing every single year, every single quarter. Everybody is expecting some great financials. That's our catalyst. So Toy finished on Friday at $1.89 with about 10.5% gains. So what is the Oncology Institute all about? Well, they tell us here they were founded in 2007. The Oncology Institute of Hope and Innovation is advancing oncology by delivering highly specialized value-based cancer care in the community setting. 
Toy offers cutting edge, evidence-based cancer care to a population of more than 1.8 million patients, including clinical trials, transfusions, and other care delivery models traditionally associated with the most advanced care delivery organizations. With over 100 employed clinicians and more than 800 teammates in over 65 clinic locations and growing, Toy is changing oncology for the better. So what is the relative volume around the company today? Well, how about that? We got over 100% jump today, and I'm not surprised. Going from 113,000 shares up to 348,000 shares. Share structure for the company? We don't get a lot of information here. All we know is the outstanding share count. That is about 73 million. Our float can be anywhere up to that, but it could be considerably less as well. Market cap for the company, we are about 138 million. Financials for Toy. This is the nice stuff. Every single year it's been growing. 2020, she was at 187 million, jumped about 20 million to 203, and jumped roughly 50 million in 2022 to 252 million. And they got to keep 52 million of that. Looking at those quarterly reports, they are growing too. 60, 64, 71, 76, 80, just consistently growing. That's what everybody's expecting and that's what everybody's betting on, including me. I think they're going to be good. Balance sheet for the company. Ooh, they got lots of current assets. They got about $29 million in the bank. They got about $10 million in short-term investments. They are owed about $47 million. They got $13 million in inventory. Add up all their current assets. They've got about $229 million. Looking at their liabilities, they've got about $145 million. That leaves us with positive shareholder equity of $58 million. I'm liking that. Taking a look at those disclosures, we don't have anything current. The most recent tech filing is an 8K that came out on the 18th of September, and this was good news. This was a notification from the NASDAQ that the company had met their compliance with the minimum bid price requirement. No more hot water, no more trouble. Everything is good with the company now. Taking a look at that news, there is the press release that confirms that the company regains compliance with the NASDAQ listing requirements. Yes! Then on October 11th, the company names Jeremy Castle as a new chief operations officer. And then it was October 18th, they tell us that the Oncology Institute announces their third quarter 2023 earnings release date. That is going to be Wednesday, November 8th of this year. And the same day, they'll have a conference call right afterwards, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you want to tap into that, here's the phone numbers. So that's what we got going on, folks. They've got strong revenues and financials are right around the corner. I'm expecting, many people are expecting them to be bigger than the last. And that should get the chart moving again. Let's go take a look at this chart. We're going to take a look at the chart for TOI, ticker TOI, the Oncology Institute. This is a one-year, one-day chart. Now, it was a full year ago we had our 52-week high of $4.89. And then she fell down to her 52-week low in June of 33 cents. And off of this low bubble, she changed her trend. It was all downhill to here. And then she started slowly turning around, crossed that 200, and look how flat that 200 is right now. And every SMA has crossed the one-year 200-day SMA, and she is climbing. Six-month, four-hour view. Well, there's our 52-week low of 33 cents, and we got a new high on our six-month chart of $1.97, which hit on Friday. Now, we've been here twice already. We came here in June on the 16th, and we came here in September on the 25th. Now, we came in just after this low bubble. She bounced off of this with a lot of fervor, crushed the 200, went way above it, and then came back down. We didn't expect her to stay up there because the 200 is way too steep falling downhill. But that helped tug it up and make it flat. She pushed herself off of this 50, landed on the 200, waiting for it to basically go level. And once it got level right there, folks, she took off. She jumped here from 50 cents up to $1.07. 
100% gains, then went sideways and fell back to the 200, which she is fully respecting. That was a solid smack. And she jumped again, going from 74 cents up to $1.75. That is like uh, 130% gains. Then she fell back to the 50, meandered around that, and now she is taking off again. Now take a look at our resistances. I drew one here the last time we looked at this and I said, if we can get through this gap and on top of this resistance, we're going to get some more strength. Well, she bounced off of this 200 with a lot of fervor and right up underneath this resistance, she took off, just shot straight through, tapped the other resistance, came back down, landed on her new support, bounced on it a couple of times, started to climb, got on her 50 and shot right through the next resistance. Now, we don't have any volume here to talk about, but the oscillators look good. Our PPO is pushing up. Our MACD is pushing up. We got green bars underneath her. And our RSI has tagged the overbought and is just pulled back sitting there right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So we got a low bubble under the 200 back here at $1.28 20 days ago. She pushed up over that 200 and that's where she wants to stay on top of the 200 now. She's bounced off of that twice and pushed herself off into the nine day SMA and she is climbing nicely. Hitting that high of $1.97 on Friday and pulling back to the nine day SMA and pushing off of it. Right now she is right there at $1.91 and she closed at $1.89. You can see our volume on Friday was stronger than the days before, so it is increasing right now. Our 200-day SMA has just started to push up. Everything looks good right there. All the SMAs are lovely. Our oscillators are just as pretty. Our PPO is pushing up. Our MACD is pushing up. There's a little bit of pullback there, but not much to worry about. And our RSI is at 62. Checking out that five-day, five-minute. That's a nice chart. We got a low in this corner of $1.45 and growth every single day over the last five days. Hitting a high here of $1.97, pulling back to the 50 and jumping back up. And right now she is at $1.91. That 200 looks beautiful. Everything is looking nice here, folks. We don't have any catalyst between now and the 8th. Maybe something comes out, but I didn't see a lot of that sort of news. But we know that the financials are coming out. We know that their financials have been growing consistently year after year, quarter after quarter. What are we expecting? Better financials again. So I'm expecting this to take off, folks. But of course, I haven't covered everything. So do some more due diligence. Not just on this company, on the other two I covered as well. You know I didn't cover everything. And since it's your money you're investing, you should know as much as you can. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.